Hi everyone and welcome! This is a follow-up video on the ISA Blaster. In case you're not familiar with the project, the ISA Blaster is a platform for building software-defined ISA cards with the help of a Raspberry Pi Pico. This means that the firmware loaded to the Pico defines the functionality of the card. So in theory we could turn it into whatever card we want within the bounds of the Pico's processing power. In the previous video, a lot of people shared some great ideas about what we could use this for. Anyway, if you are interested to know more about it, please refer to my last video. I have been working on getting the IEC Blaster to work as a USB mouse controller for DOS. This has two parts. First, the firmware that runs on the Pico. And second, the mouse driver for DOS, which is a hacked version of the cute mouse driver that I named Dirty Rat. The project worked well, but as I showed in my last video, there were some issues in Monkey Island. Left click would sometimes register as right click and would trigger the default verb action in the game. Also, when trying to exit the game, the yes no pop up window would show up for a bit but would disappear right away as if I double clicked. Quite a few people commented about potential causes for these issues. Such comments are always helpful, so thank you for sharing your thoughts. Some people suggested that this looks like a bouncing problem. Mouse buttons are physical switches, and physical switches are not perfect. When a switch closes, the connection may not actually close for good after the initial contact. The mechanical contacts may actually bounce for a very short time, briefly opening the circuit before closing the circuit for good. This may result in the electrical signal changing states rapidly for a short period of time before stabilizing to its permanent state. So if your software has no debouncing, then a single button press could register as multiple button presses. Debouncing routines fix this by only reporting the steady state, not the intermediate flaky states. Ok, this looked like a promising lead, so I had to check what was going on. So I printed some logs when data was available by the tiny USB library, but I did not see any bouncing issues. Whenever I clicked, I would not see any additional data packets. But what was interesting was that a click was actually sending two packets. A button press packet and a button release packet. And by looking into the issue a bit more, I realized that it was the button release that was triggering the issue in Monkey Island. That is, clicking but holding the button down would work as expected. But releasing the button would trigger the default verb action as if I had right clicked. This was very strange. So I initially thought that the issue could be down to the ISA bus not receiving the right bytes when the left button was released. But I did not have a good way to check this. Luckily, the cute mouse driver includes a utility named protocol that dumps the bytes that it receives from the mouse. But the tool was meant to talk to the UART chip, not to the ISA blaster card. So I modified it to work with the ISA blaster and named it Dirty Protocol or in short DRT Proto. So now I could print all the data that the driver receives from the mouse. And it turns out that the data was indeed correct. This was very puzzling. How could the game work incorrectly while the driver received the right data? Well, it turns out it was not my fault at all. The driver that I used as the base for Dirty Rat was a modified version of the cute mouse driver. It was modified such that you can build it on a modern system using the open source JWASM assembler and such that the driver would work on early 8088 or 8086 machines. So when I tried the driver without any of my changes using a serial mouse, it had exactly the same issue on Monkey Island. This was both a relief and a bit disappointing because on one hand I knew that the ISA blaster and dirty rat worked fine, but on the other hand I either had to fix the issue or use the original cute mouse driver which only builds on a DOS system. I thought that working on a DOS system would be a miserable experience, so I decided to go ahead and try to find the bug and fix it. Well, this took longer than I expected. But I finally figured out that there was a bug in the routine that implements DOS int 33 system call function 6, return button release data. This system call returns, among other data, the button that got released. Most of the games I tried, like Sierra games and Warcraft 2, seemed to ignore the button release data, they only used the button press data. But Monkey Island definitely used it, and this function returned the wrong button. 
the bug was an incorrect calculation of an index pointing to an array that contained the mouse data. When I fixed it, Monkey Island started to work correctly. I sent out a patch to the developer of the modified driver in case anyone else faces the same issue. After fixing this, Dirty Rat worked great. I tested it on four of my systems with ISA slots. Revision 0.1 of the PCB worked great on two of them, a socket 7 and a socket A. The 386 board would not even boot with the ISA blaster plugged in, and if I plugged it in while the system was on, it would crash. This was very strange. I debugged the issue by masking off pins with some scotch tape. The system would work with the memory read pin masked off. This is one of the two pins, the memory read and the memory write, that are not connected to level shifters. Instead, they are connected to voltage dividers so that we don't waste our level shifter IC just for two pins, which by the way are not even used at the moment. The voltage divider is using 2.2K and 3.3K resistors connected to ground. The memory read signal is asserted low and is pulled high by a 10K resistor on the motherboard. So plugging in the ISA blaster to the slot would connect the memory read signal to ground through a 5.5K resistor lowering the voltage level enough that the logic level is zero. In a future revision of the board I will fix this issue, but if you are planning to build the revision 0.1 board, you can either leave the through hole resistors unpopulated or use higher values. So after fixing the issue on my 386 system, I also tried it on my 486 system, but that didn't work well. The bus reads seem to be bringing in completely wrong data according to the DRT Proto tool. Could it be that the specific ISA controller on my board is ignoring the I.O. channel ready signal? Or could it be some configuration issue, perhaps a jumper or BIOS setting? If you have any ideas of what may be wrong, please let me know in the comments. The default I.O. address and IRQ used by the Dirty Rat project conflict with COM4, so you must disable the conflicting serial port to use it. But I have made this configurable both on the driver and on the firmware. I am not sure if there is a free I.O. address or IRQ that would work better and would not conflict with common devices. If you have any ideas, please let me know. The Dirty Rat driver is actually simpler than the original Cute Mouse driver, so its TSR uses a little bit less RAM. We are a bit under 3K, which is nice. As you can see, it has two new options. The first is for the I.O. address and the second for the IRQ. You can specify the I.O. address with the slash A option, And you can also specify the IRQ with the slash I option. Unloading the driver works like in the original driver with the slash U option. I'm currently working on a couple of changes for the next revision of the board. I am planning to add some simple circuitry for resetting the Pico when the system resets. I am also adding a serial port header for debugging. Also, since there are not enough GPIO pins on the Pico to connect to all the pins of the ISA bus, I'm thinking of adding a couple of headers that will allow you to map two pins of the Pico to a number of pins of the ISA bus using jumpers. Finally, I'm considering adding a 9-pin header for connecting an external USB bracket. This would remove the need of adding a custom bracket to the ISA blaster to hold it in place. The only issue is that the most common brackets have two USB ports but only one of them would actually work. Feel free to share any other ideas you may have in the comments below. Ok, that's all for now. The sources for all the sub-projects are now available on GitHub. This includes the ISA Blaster PCB, the Dirty Rat Mouse Driver, and the Dirty Rat Firmware. Please note that this project is still in early development and is meant for tinkering and experimentation. So it should not be considered as production ready. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching and goodbye.